says the planned incision must be of adequate length to allow for efficient enucleation of the myoma, but without undue trauma to healthy uterine tissue. Transverse uterine incision facilitates ipsilateral laparoscopic suturing. Multiple myomas can be enucleated through a single hysterotomy when possible. So enucleation of myoma, these are our alternatives that I'm giving you. The capsule of the myoma is inside, incised, and because if you're not able to go through it directly, then how you're supposed to do it. The capsule of the myoma is incised and this dissection proceeds between the inner capsule and myoma edge. If developing the appropriate plane proves difficult, one can make a shallow incision in the myoma itself, which may help distinguish myoma from capsule. Application of traction on the myoma and counter traction on the capsule provides surgical exposure and aids in the enucleation of the myoma. The myoma capsule need not be excised additionally. Incising the endometrium should be avoided if possible. Histor heffy. So using laparoscopic suturing techniques, the myometrium is approximated in multiple layers using 0 or 20 gauge delayed absorbable suture in running or figure of 8 fashion. Care must be taken to effectively approximate tissue and achieve hemostasis without undue tension being placed on the myometrium, which may lead to tissue strangulation. The serosa is approximated using either 20 delayed absorbable. So this is the myoma extraction. The mosellation in the endo bag, you can see we have put it inside as an endo bag, we are mosellating it. A mini laparotomy can also be done to take out the mosellator bag or a posterior colpotomy. So in mini laparotomy, you give a small incision. In laparotomy, it's a big incision and you take out the endo bag through it because you have mosellated it and kept it in the endo bag. But and some cases you can do the posterior colpotomy because if the patient is very much cosmetic, like the patient doesn't want any big incision on her abdomen, you can take it through the vaginal end by doing a posterior colpotomy. You can take it out. You see, this is the mosellator that we have introduced inside. So, adhesion prevention that is the most and foremost thing that a surgeon should always target. So, the, a good surgical technique this includes gentle tissue handling, a meticulous hemostasis. There should be irrigation to prevent serosal drying. So you have to be very particular. The tissue handling has to be very gentle. And the hemostasis has to be good. You need to keep on seeing that how much blood loss is happening. You just you can't keep on operating. And you need to irrigate the areas to prevent any serosal drying. Because as, as much drying is there, you will have so much additions post-op. The patient will complain of pain if you are not targeting fertility. Then the patient will daily come to your OBD and say that they are having a lot of pain post-surgery. And to avoid any intraperitoneal infection, there should be a use of fine non-reactive sutures and minimal use of cautery to prevent tissue ischemia. This is very important that the cautery use has to be minimal. If you go through proper planes and you take all the pre-op precautions, believe me, you will not lead to a lot of bleeding and so the cautery use will be very minimal. Anti-adhesion agents. So what all? We can give drugs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. We can give anticoagulants. Direct irrigation of suture line with heparin is shown to reduce additions formation and corticosteroids can be given. Physical barriers like oxidized regenerated cellulose intercede that we all must be using. All surgeons are using it. It works by transforming into a gelatinous mass that we keep on the suture, covering the damaged peritoneal surfaces and forming a barrier, physically separating the adjacent raw peritoneal surface. Seprafen, it is composed of modified hyaluronic acid and carboxymethyl cellulose. This is also very good. The solutions we are, we can use crystalloids, the installation of large volumes of normal saline or RL at the end of a procedure to produce a hydrofrotation effect has been used for long as an economical and anti adhesion strategy. Or we can use hyaluronic acid gel also. So to conclude, lap Laparoscopic myomectomy is a very popular minimal invasive technique and it has been widely used for removal of uterine fibroid over the past decades. The main drawbacks of laparoscopic myomectomy are high chance of uterine rupture, high risk of recurrence, and technically demanding procedure which require a high degree of training and skill. Laparoscopy minimizes the risk of addition formation. Therefore, laparoscopy should be standard approach for myomectomy. Thank you.